Hey guys, Arduecha here. In this video I want to talk about how I get my breed lines and everything you need to know to get the breed line yourself, a good one that is. First off, I want to address something that most people don't think about and that's the fact that most people go with conservative stuff such as a low tier crossbow or stuff like that which works. But it really isn't that time effective which I always go for when I go for tames. I always go with the highest damage long neck and shocking darts or trank darts on extinction since there is no shocking darts. This is mostly because I save a lot of time knocking out stuff, which minimizes the time you spend on unnecessary stuff, which actually adds up quite a bit. And on top of that, I always bring cable if I can, just because then I have something that doesn't spoil. And I don't need to keep frantically looking for a sheep or prime or something like that. Even though it would lose a few levels by going for prime or uh, mutton, it would s not be that big of a deal to be honest. It's just one or two, maybe three or four levels. Except for herbivores, they lose a lot of levels. Now I'm gonna show you the most important part of getting high stat tames, the spawn map. What you want to find is an isolated spawn spot. This is because you want to shuffle in dinos with high level and high stats. I will show you on screen how you find them and what I mean by that. So here we have the spawn map and I'm gonna look for a monogarmer because it has a fairly good spawn map, which you can see if we look at the full spawn group, it has pretty much everything in snow here. You kind of want to kill everything here to get them to spawn in, but keep in mind they have an upper limit. Now I'm gonna look for something that might have a worse spawn, so Doid maybe. Let's see, uh, no this is actually a pretty good spawn map, I'm gonna look for something else. Argentavis, okay. Uh, if you see here this is very big, so I'm gonna deselect a few of these to figure out where the spawn groups are. This is helpful because now I can figure out which groups is worth shuffling and which is not. Like you can see here now we have a good spawn area. Like it's very small and it fits everything I said. Now you can see all of the dinos it share spawns with. All of these you kind of need to kill to shuffle them back in to get high level and high stats. Okay, so next here I'm going to show you a bad spawn. Let's see, this one I think. Yeah, this one. Look at it, it's super big and it has a huge spawn group. Next here I want to show you another example, uh, Ar uh, Anki maybe? Yeah, okay, so this looks really scary, right? But you just remove one by one to figure out the best ones that kind of are super tight spawn areas. Let's see, all of these are kind of big, so this one is kind of small actually. I just want to see what spawn group it has. Uh, it's not too bad. Let's check this one. Yeah, this is kind of decent, but too far away, I think, from each other. Uh, this one is really, really far. This one is not too bad. So next up is Dododex, which I used to figure out what kind of stats they have. If you want exact value, you could press plus or minus. Usually I go for 30 points, like you can see, this is what I go for. Uh, I could check uh, Snow Owl and show you how you get like the average for a 150. Keep in mind, this is kind of different with flyers because they have no wasted points in general. I'm not sure about the Snow Owl, but that's a general rule of thumb. What I use for post team stats is uh, Arc Smart Breeding. Uh, as you can see here is an example filled out. You need to fill everything here for it to work and I will li link it in the description. Okay, so over to how many points I go for when I look for breed lines. It does depend a bit on the current breed line, if I want a quick breed line or just get started to get people some decent dinos to imprint or if I want to get on mutating them to a very strong breed line. It all depends. Now there's a lot of math going on when it comes to stats, so I just want to do the simple thing and that is uh, providing you the exact points that I go for. Uh, 30 points is usually pretty safe and I usually go for 40 points after tame for the first breed line. This is when I don't take it too seriously and it's a pretty good starting point to mutate off of. 
with flyers it's 37 points and 49 points. This is, by the way, using a uh, decent stat pre-tame, but average post-tame stat distribution, which means uh, I am lucky with the uh, wild, but I'm not lucky when I tame. What I mean by this is that when you tame something, they get 74 points if it's 150. The average distribution would be 10 points for each stat, and when it's a flyer, it's going to be 12 points, which is the average distribution. And uh, 30 points is about 14%, top 14%, which means it's uncommon, but it's not very, very rare. When it comes to what kind of level I tame when they're wild, it uh, kind of is up to you. I usually never go below 135. This is because for about every 10 levels, the average post tame stat would be one less. So it kind of affects your outcome, but if you find one with high stats at 130 or whatever, it still could become really good, so it's still worth going for. Okay, so now I want to show you if you are just as lucky with the post-tame as you were with the pre-tame. The chances here are somewhat low, but it's still reasonable, so you can kind of expect this to happen every now and then. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of high point and it would be very valuable in terms of training with other tribes and stuff like that because it doesn't happen that often and most people go for complete rng without thinking about the pre-tame rng so they go for uh, lucky post-tame roles rather than spending some time knocking out good stuff pre-tame now when i start looking for stuff to upgrade or mutation skip my breed line i usually go for whatever i had or went for four so for instance 30 points if i have like 40 to 44 and and add like a few points for each level or stats above that to compensate once you start hitting the upper 40s to 50s it's probably possible still to get higher when you tame but it's very unlikely and that's kind of the point where i don't find it worth going for uh, wild anymore. This is because it, you have to keep in mind that it doesn't really matter what level or stats or whatever you have, you can always m mutate to get ahead of it. Like even a level 10 could be the best breed line in the game in the long run, but you save time by going for wild dinos rather than breeding, because breeding takes a long time. But you do have to keep that in mind when you go for breed lines. So the most important thing to think about there is just that for every time you get a mutation, depending on the dino, you could ha look at two days or four days on official 1x with the Rex, for instance, to get a single mutation going and then maybe two to four days to get a male with that mutation and so forth. So it if you could spend like one or two days looking for a breed better breed line, it, you would save time a lot actually say you have 40 points and you get the 46 points that's three mutations and then you skip three mutations right if that makes sense i could go in depth when it comes to mutations and breeding but that would be in another video and only if this actually does well and then i mean really well because it would take a lot of time to explain it and comp press it into a small video because if you look at youtube most of them are pretty long and has way more information that you need than you need and in the background here by the way i am kind of showing off how i usually shuffle when i have a decent spawn group so this would be the monogarmer shuffling on extinction uh, it's pretty simple when i stop seeing more monogarmers when it's really few of them or i can't find one i start killing everything just to make them spawn in uh, another great example with this map actually is that you have gigas which spawn up to four rather than the max one or max two that it always has been. This is because for whatever reason it shares spawn which it hasn't done before which is kind of weird but it kind of is useful I guess. I just want to end it on what happened when I shuffled for a decent time on single player with official settings so it doesn't have multipliers like single player usually does. 
in this video and then here just to show you how it ends up and that was a few hours not not that long now this one is the 33 points pre tame and 47 points you saw on smart breeder so you can see the results if you did enjoy please leave a like if you didn't dislike and if you want more maybe even breeding one then leave a comment and subscribe I don't know, ring a bell. Uh, bye.